morning everybody so it's uh, day three last night we had a delicious turtle and crawdad stew it was really really nice if you are just coming in and you haven't seen that definitely go check out yesterday's episode but uh Zach's getting some firewood for us I'm about to head down to the creek and get us some water as most of you know uh, we've got the grail water filters that we got from Fiddleback Outpost. They are a really good French press filter, super convenient, especially when we're checking lines and we're thirsty, we've got our satchels on us and we're just drinking water, everything's good to go. But for cooking and kind of keeping our hands clean, as the days keep rolling in, I wanted to make sure we have something a little more efficient, lasts us a little longer. This is the Hydro Blue Go Flow 10 liter gravity water bag. There's a few of these on the market. This uses the VersaFlow water filter that can filter out 100,000 gallons, but the 10 liters is gonna be epic. All right, guys, so it's not all the way full. I have about five liters in here. Go back to camp. Probably a good idea. Check the lines. See how my minnow traps are doing. Oh yeah, there we go. Got about five big ones in there, a bunch of small ones, still a lot of bait. So I'm gonna throw this back in, slightly different spot. Oh, Zach? Got some water, bud. How's that? Nice. So if anybody's unfamiliar with a gravity system, which I'm pretty, most of the people on my channel are familiar with one, but just in case we have some newcomers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pinch this off. This is a little clamp to keep the water from uh, flowing through. Got this little O-ring seal that will pop right in here. Push that in. Yep, and we're already starting to get water coming through. So once the hose is connected, you just take the water filter, plug it in like this. It's good to go. Let the uh, tube start flowing through and we're gonna start getting water. But I'm going to show you how to build a bushcraft chair. Stick with me.
Oh, I got my blowgun and I'm off to do some foraging. But if I run into something like a gopher, a raccoon, rattlesnake, I can take this and we'll have some more exotic meat tonight. Ooh, look what I found. Alrighty, so when you're out in a survival situation, you always want to look around. Look on the ground, we've got some pecans, some will have husks on them, some will be rotten, some will have holes in them. This one doesn't look too bad, but learning the area around you as far as what is edible for plants is extremely important and knowing what's in season is also vital. You don't want to get into a survival situation not knowing your local area. It can be extremely dangerous not knowing the plants and everything and the food sources around you. So having access to things like the prickly pear cactus, wild onions, pecans, those staples alone in season, in the correct season, can be a lifesaver. And just eating meat and catching stuff every day is great. You're going to be able to last a very, very long time. But getting things like high in things that are high in fat, carbohydrates, those are what's going to keep your energy up and keep you sustained for much, much longer. Zach doesn't look to be here. We didn't get a rattlesnake or a raccoon or anything, but I got some pecans. I think I'm gonna go out a little bit later, go for some of the tunas, the fruits off the cactus, so we can get some more uh, sugars and carbs because can't get enough of that out here with all if everything's manual labor. I mean, you want a chair, you gotta build it. You want anything, you gotta make it happen. So this morning we built a chair. It's uh, kind of nice just to be able to sit down. However, we are going to have some rain come in. I don't want to get all the stuff at my campsite wet. That's just no bueno. That's just a hassle you don't want to deal with, especially in a survival situation. So we have some of these extra long pieces that we when we cut the chair to length. And I'm going to show you how to just take these extra pieces in your existing chair and turn it into a makeshift shelf slash table for your gear underneath your chart. All right, so first thing you want to do is get it underneath the tarp. Once it's underneath the tarp, it's pretty simple. The same way you would take the extra pieces of wood to sit on it to make a share. You kind of just go through the rest of the frame and set your gear neatly on top of it underneath the tarp to keep it weather protected. Just like so, not too difficult, pretty easy. And by going through these motions, get some more logs and stick them over and that way you have a nice little platform to actually keep all of your gear and tools tucked away inside underneath the tarp with days with rain. Now that we have everything on top, we just start stacking our gear off the ground underneath the tarp and we're good to go. So hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of insight and a fun little tip to take a really cool project like a bushcraft chair, which is really awesome for a plethora of things and just getting off your feet when you're having to stand and walk around for hours and hours and hours each day, turning this into a makeshift table slash stand for your stuff in inclement weather or just day to day, it's just nice. Dude, I love this machete. We're gonna check traps right here. We have a keeper trap that we're gonna take our crawdads and transport them over to here. And by doing so, we're gonna be able to rebait these traps and have an even bigger meal tonight. Yeah, That's the big daddy crop. Oh, I'll grab them out of there. Hey, 
is that thing? I don't know. Slug? No, no, it's gonna come. I don't think there's water slugs. Woo! That's a big one. That is a monster. All right, so Zach's got the second trap. I set the first one, and we're moving these a little farther down so we can keep up our daily calories, because that's a thing. Because if we don't catch it, we don't eat it. Ooh, that was a good shot. This is where we put a have a heart trap for some raccoon, and we're about to bait it with some tuna. See, cactus are everywhere, even on the bank. So while we're about to hit tuna on this particular trap, something I wanted to get your attention to is this intersection right here. This intersection is kind of a cutoff between different pools of the creek. So this is the pool that we just came from. This is our main pool where we've been getting most of our sustenance and food. But when water rises and floods into epic proportions, bigger monster fish from the river could come down here, have a heyday at all of the crawdads and the minnows that are out here. But the benefit to us is as it lowers, if any of those monster fish get stuck in any of these pools, they get trapped because they can't swim through these thin spots. What are you doing? My fish. Hey. Really? Those are for the raccoons, so we can catch something bigger. No, I won't know. <laughs> he won't know, but we know. No, it's just a finger full for good luck. Yeah, last night I almost broke down and ate one when I set the other trap. I really want him to taste this and like really get a feed for it. All right, this here particular trap, you pull up on this, push this in, and you pull up this mechanical doohickey. And there's a little spring thing and clip, and you set it right in there. And when the critter comes along and touches that touch plate, he gets caught like this. Bam! And all of a sudden, you got yourself a big old dinner. Uh, if anybody's wondering what companion knife I'm using, this is my companion camp knife from KC Knives. My buddy Kevin is the maker. It's made of Z-Wear. It's amazing, super amazing. Very sharp, durable, reliable. All the things you look for in a good woman. Getting so durable. That's funny. Going right in here. Set it down on this embankment. All right, so that stick right there, minnow trap, raccoon slash possum trap. The other minnow trap's down there. Now it's time to go eat dinner. On the way back to camp, check in the traps. Still not set, bait's still there. All right, I guess we'll check in the morning. So, back at 
camp. Got the crawfish traps out. Got the fire strip roll right here. Mostly because I just want to get a fire started quickly. We all know that my fire still works just fine. It's all about convenience and speed tonight. Well, got a fire going. <clears throat> Gonna go check the uh, traps here in a minute. See how many crawdads we got tonight. Hopefully in the morning we'll have some catfish. Something really good. But uh, I think tomorrow's adventure is we're gonna go hunt down gar. Super excited. But uh, just have, have a fire. And be able to kick my feet back. Feels good. Being on your feet all day, man. Definitely puts a toll on you. Nope. We got a bucket full of crawfish. So this was from the keeper from last night in the two traps we just checked. Not epic, but oh my gosh, in a survival situation, you will be crying like I am. Alrighty, add in the water. go to bed I got all my stuff on top of my chair like I said it's supposed to rain tonight underneath the tarp tripod all that good stuff everything's locked down and secure day three's done crawdads all three days in a row but you know what I'm so thankful to be able to eat every single day and that does a lot up here i think if i would have even had one day off because it's still so warm like tonight it is about 70 degrees but this really high humidity very muggy right by a creek so i will say though without any type of calories in your system it's not hard to become very weak so definitely i would say first points of priority is find a water source get a fire going build your shelter immediately and then start going after food sources but that's my crazy little piece of advice for day three now i'm gonna go to bed on to day